Your teacher sent me your report. Where did we go wrong? Most parents would be pleased that their daughters are doing so well in school. Most parents will be dead forever. Would you like to talk about God? Get lost! Oh, wow. Well, one sec. Women will be fulfilled by making the home their work. And have you personally found that? No. But I've only been doing it 17 years. My son idolizes me. He's drawing you in an acid bath. Sorry. Dad got me up at 4 a.m. to do apocalypse practice. I'm not going to ask what that is. This is my Tupperware of sin. Is the porn hidden under the raisin packets? I coveted the women in these pictures. They're not naked, David. She might as well be naked with that coquettish smile. Uh-oh. <laughs> I have a question on behalf of my daughter. Dad! You want to talk about God? Mm-hmm. Boys. Gross. Andrew, hello. Are you drunk? No. I'll go wherever you take me, Andrew. <gasps> Am I in some kind of jacuzzi? What have you got there, Dad? A raisin packet, which I'm enjoying for the fruit it contains. Right. Boom! There you go! That was a trailer for Everyone Else Burns arriving on the CW on October 26th. It's your boy Kuya P. This is Nerds Rule the World! And as you see on the screen, I'm so excited. I have the showrunners, the creators, the writers, the producers behind this amazing new show that's gonna be your fave. I know it's gonna be my wife's fave. I'm telling her right now. I know she's gonna die. She's not gonna be dying to see this. Um, I have Oliver Taylor, Dylan Mapletoff, as well as Molly Seymour. Thank you all for your time. I truly appreciate you uh, coming from across the pond uh, to talk to me here in the US. Uh, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, thank you so much for having us. Love it. So uh, I think as we started earlier, uh, I told y'all I had the chance to screen it, uh, got the blessing. Shout out to my peoples at CW. And uh, was it a blessing? Uh, 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 I think that's the appropriate word uh, because this you know series talks about religion. And uh, I grew up in the South, uh, in South Carolina, to be exact, here in the U.S. And uh, I've been around these kind of folks. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I totally <laughs> delighted in kind of the comedy aspect of this. And uh, I can't wait for everybody to see it. And like I said earlier, my wife is a Britcom fan. This is truly going to be her new fave once I can share it with her. And I can't wait because I know she's just going to be uh, laughing. And laughing is just the best medicine because she's kind of sick right now. So I can't wait for her to yeah. uh, get her laugh on with this. It's going to be so much fun. Um, but Dylan uh, and Oliver, uh, this came from your minds. Uh, if I could start with you guys. <laughs> Um, I know you uh, had a fixed brain. Uh, I see y'all had, I did some other homework and uh, you guys uh, did a great play. Y'all met in university. Um, I'm curious how this one came about together uh, with the both of you. Oh man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, no, that, that is amazing knowledge. Fixed my brain. Yeah. So that was the, that, the first show Ollie and I ever did together. Um, and we used to do it live and we'd run it kind of, well, you know, I was working part time and Ollie was a doctor and we sort of do it wherever we can. But we always, always wanted to write um, for TV rather than kind of live stuff. And so we um, just kind of we sort of were talking about kind of our upbringing and our experiences. And I think what we one of the things we loved about this world, apart from being able to kind of pull from um, some kind of insights and experiences we had was just sort of the, the high stakes that were kind of naturally sort of baked in, you know, that sense of the world is ending, kind of souls needs to be saved. If 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 that's what you really believe, kind of every every second counts. And we found that it really sort of lent a, a kind of great sort of kind of frame to a show that is at its heart about a family, but it's kind of a family with these sort of high stakes in the background. Oh, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, absolutely. We love kind of traditional family sitcoms. We want to turn those kind of intergenerational tensions up to 11 by introducing the the niche religious sect aspect of it. I love it. Awesome. And it's, yeah, I think that's what's going to expand even more. I think, you know, people are going to like, man, they're talking about religion a little bit because, you know, religion, politics, we're not supposed to talk about those taboo 
things, but there's a little, there's a lot more depth to it and it's so much fun. Um, so I, I'm curious about the writing process uh, as a creative and writer myself, you got the two of y'all and you know, how, how does that work? You know, like who outline the, the dialogue, um, how does, uh, that combination between you two, um, you know, go about, uh, in, in the process of everyone else burns. It does broadly work, doesn't it, Dylan? I, th I think we have to think about figuring out how to do it. So, you know, we do, because we adore the subject matter so much, the bigger problem tends to be getting kind of two pressures about which scenes each of us get to write, because sometimes there are scenes that we're both, you know, very committed to writing. I think in general, when it comes to outlining the series, um, uh, building the world, that's always done together. Um, we'll go away and do research, but the brainstorming of what is going to finally make it into the world, that's done as a collective. And then if we're outlining an episode, again, we'll do that together. And then we'll divvy up scenes and we'll go away, bring back our drafts, exchange them back and forth so we can uh, look over them. It is interesting having a collaborative effort, having a partner, it can really accelerate the process in the way that you wouldn't necessarily expect because often it's just one sticking point, one gag, uh, one idea for a scene that you can't quite get past. And when you run that past someone who's had a new perspective and hasn't been working on it for hours, they can suddenly come up with it in, in a moment. So you might imagine that it's a, a bunker where we squabble and get nothing done. But actually, for the most part, having each other involved does seem to accelerate that process and help you get over the creative humps when you hit them. Don't know if you yeah, saw totally. yeah, no, no, totally. Like, I mean, I think, I mean, we do have days. We have the occasional day, like a few weeks ago. I remember starting the day by saying to Ollie, "I'd love it if today could be one of those days where I contribute nothing at all, and uh, <laughs> you sort of do everything." And that, you know, occasionally that will switch up. But um, yeah, I the think generally to say that first, and then, then, then you yeah, be, be the one to say it first but generally it's I mean especially you know working in comedy it's great because you know you can I can write sort of five different kind of alternate versions of the same line and basically send them to Ollie as someone whose you know judgment and kind of comedy sense I choose and just be like pick the best one and cut the rest or we might kind of bank you know extra lines to throw in on the day when we're shooting if we if we need to but yeah, just that that kind of fresh eyes and that sort of different perspective is is really 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 useful, and I think it's something we both uh, thrive on. Oh yeah, D Dylan is ultra diligent, and when I open up his drafts, he's already written six or seven different alts for the same line. Uh, so it's not a matter of just picking the first thing that comes off the top of his head. Always drilling deep past the kind of the superficial level cliches that you have to find the best thing we can possibly put in the scripts. Yeah, it's great. I love it. I love it. Thanks for sharing that because uh, I, I think, uh, you know, as a soul writer myself and not partnering with somebody, you know, you don't really have anybody to bounce those ideas that may not be 110%. And, and you, with that relationship, you can kind of throw it at each other and see what is good and what's bad. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, I want to bring in Molly. Shout out to Molly Seymour, Jax Media in the house. I know you run Jax Media ah. UK over there. Um, in order for them yeah. to get this brilliant project out to the people, they need you. Uh, can you tell me about uh, how like you got involved with Everyone Else Burns and, and getting these two amazing talents to the table? Yeah, it's my favorite story ever um, because I read Everyone Else Burns, I think in the first sort of few months of me being at Jack's. And, you know, I've been given this very exciting challenge of bringing this much loved US brand over to the UK. So, you know, with shows like Russian Doll and Search Party and Broad City, all of these shows resonate over here. And so I had this fun challenge of what does a UK Jax show look like? And when I read Everyone Else Burns, I knew it looked like this. And um, it, how did it come about? Well, Dylan and I had actually met like a few years before I'd started at Jax. And uh, we'd sort of had like a general, <laughs> as they say. Uh, and we sort of reconnected when I got to Jack's. And actually, we sort of talked briefly about another project that they were working on. And I really loved it. And I was like, I'm actually looking for like hard, funny, hard, funny sitcom, maybe a family. And Dylan was like, Ollie and I are writing that right now. Give us a couple of weeks. And um, and 
a couple of weeks later because Dylan and Ollie are very good at deadlines sent me um, sent me everyone else burns and I read it and just immediately knew I wanted to make it and be a part of making it and um yeah it's a, it's a real we've talked about it before it's a real sort of lesson in uh development through to production in the UK I think it's the fastest process I've ever known and it still I think took three and a half years <laughs> from reading to <laughs> it being on screen um so yeah I love it well I'm so excited it's taking over the world by storm I know you already debuted in the UK it recently uh premiered in Canada and now here in the States we're getting it everybody check it out on the CW uh, episode one premiering on October 26 and then streaming the next day on the CW app uh, I can't wait to just share it with everybody um, I want to talk about this cast there's a poster right behind me so delightful so hilarious uh, I now want to see like everything else they've done as well beyond just like y'all's work which I've done a little bit of homework on uh, can you tell me about casting everyone of Spurns and getting the people to play these characters um, let me throw it back to Dylan. Um, I mean, it, it it was honestly an absolute joy is all I can say, really. Like we, you know, um, we obviously started with the family um, and, uh, you know, piecing kind of that together. And, you know, you've got kind of Simon, who's got such an incredible kind of comedy background um but also you know he was really keen to do something kind of new with his role and I think when we were on set with him it was amazing to see how diligent he was just kind of pushing every line you know pushing the comedy as far as it would go um Amy was someone who had maybe not done loads of comedy before but we were just kind of blown away by her audition take like from the second we saw that I remember you know Ollie and I watching it and saying to Ollie that's Rachel you know she just even from, you know, the, the kind of first line she delivered, she had that kind of sense of uh, sort of innate sort of vulnerability and likability, but also she could do, um, she, she can do the comedy as well. Um, Kate is, I mean, just amazing. I mean, she, she actually came on, I think she was the last kind of piece of the puzzle to come in, but um, as soon as kind of we had her on board, we just wanted to give her more and more stuff because she's just incredible at kind of, you just give her, you know, just a look and she can get kind of so much across. And then obviously, last but by no means least is Harry, who, you know, I think this was his first job, but you really kind of wouldn't know it because once we were about a week in, he was so confident. He was kind of improving stuff. There was a, a day where we had another kind of young actor about his age in and he was basically showing him the ropes and kind of shepherding him around. And it's just been such a kind of joy to kind of see you know, this family kind of grow and him grow. And hopefully that's something that kind of viewers will get to see as the show goes on, you know, to next season, you're literally kind of watching our family sort of grow up in, in you know, with Harry getting older and kind of Rachel, you know, coming into her own and all that. So yeah, cannot speak highly enough of the cast really. I love it. Uh, oh, and also just add? a shout out to Aisha Bywaters, who is our casting director oh, yeah, on that. Of and, um, you know, our, our cast are a, a a real ensemble of the, the best comedy talent and um so yeah we're we're very thankful to have worked with Aisha on this yes yes o Ali did you want to add anything yeah I was gonna say that I 100% agree with Dylan about all that um outside of our core family we're lucky to have an incredible supporting cast of lots of dedicated British comedy acts as well we've got Morgana Robinson playing the a uh, secular neighbor character who forms an unlikely friendship with Fiona. She's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Lolly Adafope, who plays uh, a kind of do as I say, not as I do role model, uh, teacher character for uh, Rachel. Um, uh, Ali, who plays Joshua, um, Rachel's kind of love interest and sort of temptation away from the order, um, is phenomenal. And their chemistry is one of the most special things about the show. Um, uh, Liam Williams, we've got Al Roberts uh, playing uh, Abijah, the would-be cool elder. Uh, in the order. He loved throwing in improv and we, it makes us feel very ashamed as writers because several people have come up to us and said our favourite lines from the show are lines that he improv. But yeah, we had that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah we've been incredibly fortunate the, the whole cast uh, absolutely phenomenal in creating this world together
I love it. I love it. And again, Molly, uh, if you wanted to add anything more and also the amazing crew behind the camera, because it takes a village, y'all. As much as the cast gets all the love, it takes a hundred percent amazing work. Oh, my gosh. There's so many people. I mean, Nick Collett, obviously, who's our director on season one, he um, was so instrumental in this world that feels really, really specific and beautiful. And, you know, we've had so many um, nice comments about how how it looks and our DOP Will Hankey you know it's a very premium looking comedy and um uh Nick's vision had a lot to do that with that obviously and Luana Hansen who is our production designer Luana um you know designed It's a Sin and Flowers these worlds that you kind of just want to be in and um she you know there's so much detail in this show like just know that when you're in the delivery sorting office that every single envelope has someone's address on it <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like an immersive theatre experience for all of our cast. <laughs> um, Sarah Hassan, our costume designer, Cynthia De La Rosa, our hair and makeup designer. You know, these looks are all so distinctive and special. And um, yeah, so many people. Thomas Rosford Simmons, the composer, the music, you know, every single person that came on board um, loved the scripts. And we got, you know, the most amazing HODs to be part of this because of Dylan Nolly's writing. So, yeah, we, we loved our team. Love it. Love it. Shout out to everybody, both behind the camera and in front of the camera. I love that. Um, so important, especially in the U.S. right now. We're facing a strike. Pay your actors, y'all. So anyway. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Everyone else burns uh, again. Everybody streaming on October twenty sixth on the CW. Uh, I, I want to talk a little bit more about the show uh, as well. You know, we're talking about some taboo subjects. Was there anything uh, that you're like? Should we punch the envelope even harder? You know, like you know, were like should we restrain a little bit? Uh, was there anything that was just taboo, or were you just like go for it? Like uh, in regards to like the story and and what the the topics we talk about, because you know it's taboo to talk about religion and politics. Uh, was there anything you were afraid of, or you, or were you just encouraged to push the envelope a little bit? Um, I was... I... Go on, go on, no, no, go sorry. On. Well, no, I was, I was, just gonna, I was just... stand up. Off to you. <laughs> I was, I'm sure I was going to say exactly what you were, which was yeah, that we we were. One something that felt really cool to us was that we wanted it to be set in this world and we wanted it to be true to the experience of you know these people who are kind of whose religion is so central to them, but that we weren't going to be punching down or taking cheap shots or you know anything like that. We wanted it to feel kind of warm. Um, we wanted to feel like you know we were looking at everything through a compassionate lens, and I think you know you're right that kind of take religion for example there are always going to be some people that think the very idea of joking about it is just is 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 not their thing um but i think we worked really hard to make sure that the dial was kind of always on the edge of being kind of you know a, a compassionate kind of angle and that you know the the kind of humanity and the community of these characters would shine through just as much as you know those aspects of their lives that maybe to some people might seem a little bit out there. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, uh, avoiding punching down, making sure that these were rounded and developed characters was so crucial to us. We never wanted to kind of dip into stereotype. It was always about showing that richness of experience and the balance because, you know, uh, one of the things we wanted to capture is that there is a sense of community that belongs to these kind of more niche sects that you don't see uh uh, as frequently in the modern world and increasingly isolated times so that was definitely something we wanted to explore um whilst also wanting to go deep into some of the uh specific kind of we, we wanted it to be a coming of age story for rachel and seeing her chafing against the limitations that are placed on her by her family was definitely something that we wanted to explore in depth i love it how also, about I, oh, I, I, know, I was well no i was i was just gonna say there was also a sense that like yeah we we wanted it to be the backdrop is their life and their community, but actually kind of underneath that front and center are these sort of everyday family issues and experiences, you know, coming of age, growing up, marital strife, all these things that hopefully everyone can relate to was the intention. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, no worries. No worries. Thank you. And Molly, if you wanted to talk there as well. No, I think Dylan and Nolly have said it all. I think ultimately this is... Um, 
I think when people first come across this show, they think it's something and then they realize, oh, this is a sitcom. This is a family sitcom with stories of the week. And but Dylan Ollie's writing is so special that beyond that, you also have these amazing series arcs. And, you know, the feedback that we've had over here is that people have really connected to it in lots of different ways. And that's been incredibly um important to hear that feedback you know I think people have really responded to sometimes the authenticity and but also just the the universality of it the the fact that these are um yeah as Dylan says people going through things that we all go through I love it. Well, I am so excited to talk to you guys. I like I said, I think this is going to be my wife's favorite. I can't wait to binge the uh, to binge the rest of it. And all I know is maybe a season two because I think there's only like eight episodes y'all are giving us. I, I'm I'm going to need more. <laughs> and uh, again, I'm a fan of y'all's. I'm going to be looking at your other projects and as well as this amazing cast. Uh, just brilliant. Uh, just so much fun. Um, I really appreciate y'all's time. Thank you for sharing. Um, again, everybody, CW is delivering us. Uh, to us here in the States, everyone else burns October 26th, uh, next day on the CW app. Uh, Dylan Mapletoff, Oliver Taylor, Molly Seymour, thank you so much for your time. Please come back you. uh, to tell me we're going to get a season two uh, and more work because, again, I'm a fan now of y'all. And I want to give y'all flowers every time you give us great <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate y'all. Again, everybody, Bye. everyone else burns. Nerds rule the world. It's your boy, QP. Here we go. I'm recording. Okay. Good on recording. Well, first off, thank you, uh, Molly. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Oliver. It's a pleasure to chat with you. I literally uh, uh, screened the first episode this morning and it's hilarious and we'll get into that. <laughs> so thank you again for your time. I really appreciate you guys. All right. Oh, so, thank you for having us. Welcome. Thank you All so right. much. Awesome. So um, we're recording. I'm going to give a, I'm going to uh, do a three, two, one count to help me with my edit. Cause I'm going to insert the trailer right before our, our talk. And so we'll, we'll get, we'll get to going. All right, let me open that up. Okay. Here we go. In a one, two, three.